Hello, I'm Keith Johnson. Hi, I'm Mark Espinosa. And we are both training delivery specialists at Bixie. We're here to tell you about the brand new DD-102 course. It's the Applied Best Practices for Telecommunications Distribution Design course, and it is great. So let's talk about what's new. First of all, it's based on the Telecommunications Distribution Methods Manual, the TDMM 14th edition, which was recently released. It has an extensive use of color graphics, both in the presentation as well as in the student guide, has brand new design activities that allow for more team collaboration, and an expanded student guide that's much larger than the original guide and contains much more uh, useful information. The new TDMM 2020 uh, version 14 has over 2,200 pages. That's a lot of information and keeps our designers up to the minute for the latest design parameters. It also includes a new chapter, a new section, and extensive updates. And congratulations to the Bixie Publications Department. The 14th edition of the TDMM won both Best in Show and Distinguished Technical Communication Award by the Society for Technical Communication. So let's talk about the new chapter. Okay, the new chapter is Special Design Considerations. And this chapter addresses key design requirements for special occupancies. That means locations like industrial locations, laboratories, test facilities, and transportation facilities. It focuses on unique conditions and environments encountered in these type of premises and discusses their impact on structured cabling design. These conditions are commonly referred to by an acronym MICE or MICE for mechanical, ingress, climatic, chemical, and electromagnetic environments that require special considerations. Yeah, there's also a new section on disaster recovery and risk management. And this section is found in the project administration and execution chapter, which is an expansion of the previous business development and project management chapter. The section identifies the processes and procedures step by step for protecting and recovering a business or IT infrastructure in case of a disaster or major in incident. Let's look at some of the updated sections here. First of all, let's look at the simultaneous data and power within horizontal cabling information. This is all new information, and uh, commonly this refers to uh, power over ethernet as one of the ways this is provisioned. This new information was added to the horizontal distribution systems chapter. It includes information on uh, cable selection when you're running power over this type of uh, cabling, operating temperatures, cable bundle sizes, AHJ references, cabling components and equipment, and these are all required for the safe design of systems that are going to be using this type of technology. Yeah, which is an Im important section to understand as designers, especially because of the role that it's starting to play in intelligent buildings. Intelligent buildings provide a vast opportunity for the integration of various building automation systems to share the protocols and network transport on a common network. The update for this references the newly released ANSI Bixie 007 2020 to refine the design considerations for this rapid growing area. And our update on our wireless network sections is primarily concerned with updates to the theory of signal propagation, uh, propagation modeling, and link loss budget calculations. It also contains new diagrams of wireless equipment. And these topics are really relevant to the emerging technologies we have today, like 5G, distributed antenna systems, and Wi-Fi 6. Yeah, the next couple of updates are based on standards. So our healthcare uh, update is, has been refined for conciseness. And this references our ANSI Bixie 004 2018, which if those of you are not familiar with that, it's the Information Communication Technology Systems Design and Implementation Best Practices for Healthcare Institution and Facilities. Also, our data center update has to do with the latest standards that have been released. So we now have our ANSI TIA 942-B and the ISO IEC 11801-5 Part 5. 
Okay, so a lot of great updates, a lot of great uh, new sections, a new chapter, you know, but not only that, the new presentation of this is just fantastic. The presentation just looks great. There's, an imp there's improved graphics throughout, uh, real life scenarios, color, and what Bixie is known most for is all the information that they provide. Information is like we see here uh, on this slide, showing uh, you know, the type of details that are required for our students uh, as they design their different systems. And not only do we provide that information uh, in real world applications or give them real world scenarios, but we also allow them to apply it in class. So things like this, for example, you know, the, uh, the administration standard, you know, based on the 606 or the ISO IEC 14763-2-1, you know, this is a lot of information to, to interpret, especially for students who are being introduced to this uh, for the first time. But in class, we help explain that. We help uh, guide our students uh, as to how, to how to use this in real world applications, when to use it. Design considerations. You know, this is the information that people expect. The best practices, design facts and figures that you'd expect from Bixie in the course. And it still has all of those components. This is the type of information that designers must know to deliver the next generation systems that address the exploding use of internet enabled devices and other types of technologies. Yeah, I love seeing this information when I was a student of the class, Keith. I really like to see this. During our design activities, I would reference back to this. You know, for example, we have this hierarchical star distribution topology. You know, when we would be determining the type of cable we would want to use in this scenario, I'd like to reference back to this type of slide. And fortunately, as we mentioned, this information uh, is going to be available to them in their student workbooks. Another great aspect of the course is the collaboration. You know, here on the screen, we see an image of a, vir a virtual collaboration. So students in this scenario are able to work either independently or together. We have breakout rooms for them to work together. We have different type of tools for them to use, but not only do they have to use the tools that we provide, we welcome the students to use different type of uh, software or tools that they're most comfortable with, and we allow them to share it with each other. So this new in-person collaboration, uh, and virtual collaboration, you know, allows our students to share different things for a much better, better experience altogether. Well, Mark, my favorite part of Bixie courses has always been the, uh, from the design perspective, is all the design activities. You mentioned the collaboration, being able to sit with your fellow students and work on a design project, not only applying the information from class, but also learning from others that are out in the uh, field working in various uh, parts of the industry, uh, how they do things and why they do things. A lot of learning takes place in these groups. And as you can see here, we've cited several of these, and this is not all inclusive, but we have passive optical network designs, open ceiling distribution, zone distribution, building automation systems, and the list goes on and on. Outside plant, backbone design. Let's take a look at one of these. This is some output from a passive optical network activity. The passive optical network activity allows the hands-on collaboration, the teamwork, to produce uh, and learn the beginning steps of creating a passive optical network, which is emerging technology very uh, coming to the United States, becoming more and more popular, but it's widely used in other parts of the world. Very nice. Yeah, we also reference back to our more traditional style of distribution, which we consider open ceiling distribution. You know, here we highlight things like support system guidelines, uh, when and how to use zone distribution methods, and when and how to use different other components, such as MUTOAs or consolidation points. Many times students have not heard or have not used MUTOAs or consolidation points or even zone distribution. So in class, we give them the information, we give them those real life examples, and then we allow them to practice it. So we hope that we give them the knowledge they need to build the skills that they need you know, to apply this in their career. Yeah, and speaking of that zone and building automation uh, uh, or zone activity, we have a zone and building automation activity that takes that zone distribution concept and puts it in the context of an intelligent building system and building automation. 
what we do is get our uh, students to work on a design that considers maybe aspects of uh, placing sensors for building automation systems and or uh, POE lighting systems. And these are technologies that have revived the use of the zone distribution strategies. And if you go to a conference, you'll find these are very popular with building automation system companies and POE uh, lighting distributors. Yeah, I like it. It looks like, uh, it looks like this is all zoned out. Looks like we have some conduit system, some pull through boxes, some HCPs put in place to serve all of these uh, serving zones. Very cool. Yeah, notice that HCP is sort of a, a custom term for building automation systems use of CP. So the terminology is even a little bit different. Yeah, very good. And uh, and one of the one of the one of the best parts of this course is the new student guide. You know, not only do we have these great presentations that we try to provide all this knowledge for the students, but we give them something that they can take away, a place where they can make notes. Uh, in this new student guide, uh, we have just about every slide that they'll see during the presentation, uh, plenty of space to make notes and document different things. Um, and it's about twice the size of the old student guide. Uh, and that was by request. Students. Students had said that they really want to have, um, you know, the, the slides available so that they can look back on it, so that they can reference it in the future. We see here we're talking again about color, the use of color. And uh, the use of color is much more than something that looks good. And although it's visually appealing to the eye, color provides an enhanced ability to differentiate between details that you wouldn't normally see in a black and white environment and also provides better understanding of detailed concepts. Also, our student guide offers large areas for notes. Again, by request for our students, they want the large areas for note taking in there on the slides as they go through those. And also they could put uh, references to uh, various other sections like the TDMM. Notice on these particular slides at the bottom in the center, you see that blue box that references the TDMM section that applies to the particular topic. This makes it easy to go to the TDMM and locate not only this information, but more information that applies to the particular topics reference. Yeah, I love that, Keith. As a student, you know, I used to, I used to uh, really appreciate uh, in the courses where we had those TDMM references. And this is new to this course. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, because I, there would be times where I would, where I would, uh, you know, stop, stop exactly listening to the, you know, uh, to the presentation just to take some time to make notes. And then the instructor would have uh, skipped already a couple of, um, a couple of slides ahead. And having that, that TDMM reference, you know, that page reference allowed me to quickly catch up and, and get back in place in the presentation. Fantastic. Another, another thing that I really like about the new student guide is the end of module review questions. So we have a couple of different uh, uh, resources for them. You know, so not only do we have all that knowledge, all that information uh, that we share throughout the, the, uh, throughout the presentation, but then the students have something to work on in the evenings or at, at, their, uh, at their time. Um, there's review questions, and then there's also key terms. So a great reference for them in the future, something that they can you know, continue to use that student guide in the future. So take a look at what our students have said about this. They love the color. They feel the TDMM references that Mark broke up, uh, brought up. They like the team activities. And they also like it's information that's uh, real world information they can use back on the job. This course is great for an aspiring designer as well as designers with years of experience. It was created to give you new tools and perspectives that you can use immediately back on the job. Many of those who study for the RCD exam have found out that this course has been very helpful to them in cementing their understanding of the terminology and the design concepts. Yeah, so, so far the students have loved it. So, well, thank you everyone for coming to find out about the new DD-102. And on behalf of Bixie and Keith and myself, we hope to see you in this course in the future.